good afternoon, everyone. As she said, uh, I'm Matteo Ambrosetti and I work as advanced material engineer. For the ones of you who don't know Northvolt, yeah, uh, Northvolt was founded in uh, 2016 and uh, is a battery company. We are mainly focused on uh, electric vehicles, but not just electric vehicles, I would say. We are also collaborating with uh, aerospace industries and uh, also small devices. To give you an idea of the demand of batteries, the current demand and the future demand of batteries, you can see from this graph that by 2030, it will increase a lot and it, it will be mainly on uh, electric mobility, as you can imagine, but also a portion on uh, electric storage and a smaller portion on customer electronics. Uh, one of the main objectives of Northvolt is to create this kind of uh, loop from mining, so from raw materials to production, creation of active materials, which then yeah, will translate into the battery itself. And after the use of the battery from your car or your airplane, airplane if you are rich enough to buy one, the batteries will then be used, will then be recycled again. We are working heavily on, on this portion as well. So in order to close this kind of feedback loop. And to do this, we focus on a vertical integration, as I said, from mining to cell assembling, creating the electrodes, the active materials. There is also a very important part on software and digitalization, which aims as, which uh, I mean, allows us to control each single battery from the, the, the born of the battery to the death of it. And there are different facilities, labs in uh, Westeros, where I'm based, Nordvol Et, which is in uh, Sheleftio. I'm sorry for the pronouns. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> and uh, battery systems in, Spol in Poland. As I was saying, I'm based in uh, Westeros, uh, Northwell Labs, which is, let's say, the smaller version of uh, Northwell Et. So we are working on uh, research and development of the products. And uh, I'm part of a small team in the Northwell Lab. We are called the Advanced Material Team. It's a cool name. And uh, yeah, I'm the guy with the crazy hairs. Yeah, this picture is very ugly, but... and. Uh, yeah, this is not a saint that he was missing at the picture. <laughs> and there are only two computational guys. One is me, one is Karim, and the rest of the team are experimentalists. So you, you can already see how, like, this kind of imbalance between experiments and simulations. But yeah, we got access to supercomputers, so it's like if we are more than just two, kind of. Um, so... Battery components, for the one of you who doesn't know how a battery is made, you have the cathode, which stores the energy. Then you have the electrolyte, which is the medium through which the ions are transferred from one side to the other of the battery. You have the separator, which acts as a barrier to avoid uh, electric contact between uh, uh, the anode and the cathode, which can result in very bad stuff like flames, smoke, and all that things that we want to avoid for a good reason. And uh, obviously the anode where the like the energy is stored again. And this is the complete picture of the battery. So the um, research and develop development workflow of our team is very simple. We aim to work on both simulations, experiment, and theory, and create this kind of loop where they talk to each other in order to kind of find the problem, frame it, trying to, try to find a solution, and go ahead. This is how research works, actually. And uh, 
Yeah, I mainly focus on uh, atomistic level simulations, but we are also interested in AI-based material design. Also, mesoscopy simulation is uh, a very interesting topic to me, but we haven't focused on that very much so far. And then there are obviously the cell level simulations we were talking before. Uh, this is more at the, I'm going to say, console level, whereas this is more at the atom level, quantum mechanics, molecular dynamics. So I've mentioned before the components of the battery. Here we have the electrolyte. We can simulate the electrolyte behavior. Uh, and I will focus my talk on, on this, but there are also other components and they are as important as the electrolyte, like the, the electrode, like the porosity of the electrode, um, the elemental composition of the electrode. And then there are these things, the interfaces, they are as important as the other components because here is where the magic happens sometimes. Because you can have dendrites, which will penetrate your uh, separator, will create a, uh, an electric constant, uh, contact and thermal runaway and smoke fire and bye-bye to the battery. SCI is also like the solid uh, electrolyte interface layer. It's a la like a, some kind of protective layer between the, the electrodes and, and, and the electrolyte. And is as in, its composition is as important as the rest of the, the components. And from a computational point of view, we are aiming to get to this concept of nanobattery, which, is, which was recently introduced, where you basically have all the components of your battery in one single simulation. So as I was saying before, uh, the approach we are trying to tackle goes from quantum mechanics, which allows us to study the electronic properties of molecules on a very short time and length scale up to the continuum level, so the whole battery, the whole cell. And in the middle, you have classical mechanics, kinetic Monte Carlo, and mesoscale models. Uh, in the last year and a half, I work on the development of this in-house software. I call this. Northwell Atomistic Simulator, yeah, it's not the best name probably. Uh, the idea is to interconnect different softwares already available, uh, open source software, uh, in, in order to allow us to run simulation as in a simple way and to run them, I mean, to run as many simulation as possible in the smaller time. And to give you an idea, the components of this software are like the creation of the parameters for our simulation, the creation of the, the box, the simulation box here where I'm, I'm focusing on uh, molecular dynamic simulations. So you have to arrange the atom in some way. And then this Northwell atomistic simulator wrapped everything together and creates the input file, which are run using LAMPs which is a um, molecular dynamics uh, based software, um, which is then run either locally or on an HPC cluster. And after, after this software is run, after the simulation is run, we, we extract the, the trajectory and we analyze using different softwares. For the ones of you who has never heard about molecular dynamic simulations, what you do is you define a force field, which is kind of a way to define the interaction between molecules and atoms, and then you compute the forces between atoms, computing the gradient of this force field. And once you're able to compute these forces, you can evolve the system in time and space. This is a single molecule in a, a box and oops, then you can have interaction between molecules, generally van der Waals and Coulomb, like electrostatic interactions. Like in this case, you can have um, ions. We are interested in looking at ions motion inside the electrolyte because this gives us a very important observable, which is the ionic conductivity. And uh, this is 
the how a real system, how a real electrolyte looks like. So you have a bunch of solvents and a bunch of salt molecules which goes around. And uh, as I was mentioning before, it is very important to integrate the results from, uh, let's say, a low-level simulation, in this case, MD simulation, into a higher level, uh, into higher level approaches. So in this case, the simulation was taken and the ionic conductivity and diffusion coefficient and transference number of that specific system was used uh, and fed into the nurse Steinstein equation. And in this paper, they were able to compute the conductivity or the like the conductivity as a function of the salt concentration. And yeah, using another model, the pseudo two-dimensional electrochemical Newman model, they were able to compute the like the capacity, uh, the, yeah, the voltage as a function of different uh, parameters like the capacity or the temperature. And this is just one example. And I, 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 I've called this example the a bottom up. So you, you start from your molecular dynamic simulation and you scale it up to the cell level or kind of cell level. But there is also another possibility. You can go top down. So you run your MD simulation and then you observe at a molecular level, at, at the cluster level, what is happening uh, inside this system. This system, you can have, for example, different structures happening uh, in this system. You can have your ion interacting with the solvent. You can have your ion interacting with the anion. Uh, and each structure has some specific properties and some, uh, like in terms of uh, electrochemical stability or like the the potential uh, uh, around this lithium which kind of constrain the lithium to stay there so yeah one very important study that we are working on is how the coordination shell of the lithium ion is composed for example and um, you you can for example see here the probability of finding a lithium ion around it's an ion, which is PF6 molecule, as a function of the salt concentration. And as you can see from these graphs, the higher the salt concentration, the higher the probability of finding the counter ion along preferential directions. We also uh, run a bunch of simulations using HPC uh, on, on Vega, and we were able to kind of reproduce the results obtained in this paper where you have, uh, let's say, as a function of the concentration of the salt concentration, you have different mechanisms for diffusion. And for low concentration, you have just ballistic and diffusion me mechanisms. Whereas for higher concentration, you start seeing this kind of trapping regime where the lithium is kind of blocked inside its solvation shell. And uh, one very interesting result for me was to see actually the, um, the conductivity of the systems we were studying as a function of the, the salt concentration of the molar ratio. And we were able to compare with the, with the experimental results uh, from, let's say, the counterpart, the experimental counterpart. But to get this graph, I had to run 24 simulations and you cannot do this on your laptop or on your workstation because there are a lot. <laughs> And so we had to run on an HPC center uh, to get just this graph. And if you want to study how the how the conductivity changes as a not just as a function of the salt concentration, but also as a function of the solvent composition, you have to multiply that 24 by 6, and you get an even higher number of simulations that you have to run. And uh, another study we, we, we ran recently was about the dependence of the conductivity on the temperature uh, as, and uh, on the composition of our electrolyte. And even here, there was a very good match between the, here on the right, you, you have the experimental results and here you have the computed results. And there is a very good match in terms of our relative, because I want to stress one point here, simulations at least from the best of my experience are not meant to 
reproduce exactly the experimental results, but more to give a trend to the experimentalists, which then will tr like get their conclusion on 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 what to experiment next. So to recap, those are the research lines we are working on at Northfold and on let's say on the simulation side. Uh, bulk properties, local properties, molecular properties. I haven't talked about the um, reactivity of molecules and their chemical stability, but we are also working on, on this because it's very important in order to model the SCI growth. And I want to finish with, uh, let's say, this is a next level we are working on dendrite formation. It's very hard to model this. And you cannot do it using uh, MD simulations because it's something happening on a completely different time and length scale. But you can do this using kinetic Monte Carlo models. But again, to be in order to be able to run a kinetic Monte Carlo simulation, you need data from quantum mechanics and molecular dynamics. So you need to integrate everything. Uh, and this is very important. And yeah, I want to thanks Lilith and ENCCS and Vega for giving us the opportunities to use the cluster. Thank you very much, Matteo.